Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to kind of be continuing the discussion and conversation of the hole that OJ Howard has now left in this offense and talk about some of the guys who could potentially replace him on this team in terms of that role that he has had in the offense so far throughout the first month of the season. Now, it has been confirmed that OJ Howard did tear his Achilles. At first, I thought I believed it was ruptured, but now it has been confirmed that he tore his Achilles. He his out for the year and a lot of you guys told me in the comments section you know coming back from an Achilles injury is not an easy thing to do and it just sucks you know I'm a big fan of OJ Howard uh, I really want to see him succeed I think that he's a phenomenal tight end and I wish him nothing but a speedy recovery hopefully he can come back have a really awesome year next year with Tom Brady and the rest of the boys and uh, make some noise and overall win some games for the team next year uh, but OJ Howard is unfortunately out for the remainder of this season and he he has a hole in the offense that now needs to be filled. The role that OJ Howard had so far up to this point in the offense was he was getting around, I want to say, four to six targets a game, uh, and he was definitely an overall pretty balanced tight end when it comes to not just being able to catch passes, but also run blocking as well. So who can we look to in terms of filling that void that OJ Howard has now left on the offense? Well, let's first talk about the pass catching void. The first thing that I want to mention is uh, OJ or uh, sorry, Rob Gronkowski, in terms of filling that void for the passes that O.J. Howard was catching every game day. So right now as it stands, Rob Gronkowski did not have a very active first three or I guess two weeks in terms of receiving ability for this Buccaneers offense. I think he had only gotten maybe two or three targets through two games. It was not very impressive. Then the week three matchup came where I believe he got six passes thrown his way. He caught four of them, I believe. And then most recently in this game versus the Chargers, he got one pass thrown his way where he just made an insanely athletic catch. I thought the pass was going to be intercepted, but Rob Gronkowski did Rob Gronkowski type things and it was awesome to see. Uh, in terms of filling that you know role of getting a few more targets thrown his way that OJ Howard would have had, I could see Gronk getting a couple more of those opportunities. It seems like he's getting more into the flow, into the groove. He's starting to get back that uh, chemistry that he has with Tom Brady that he did for years in New England, and it seems like he's getting more comfortable in the offense as well. Initially, Rob Gronkowski was being used as a blocking tight end for a certain amount of time, but now it seems like he's getting a couple more opportunities as a receiving tight end as well. So I could see him go ahead and uh, fill in that role. Again, uh, I said this in a previous video, he was the 1A starter to OJ Howard's 1B starter. They were both basically the starting tight end. Uh, the one concern that I would have is Rob Gronkowski himself suffering an injury. If you put him out there too much uh, and throw him the ball too much, obviously he could sustain an injury. He has had problems with injuries in the past. So while I don't think he'll get a ton more targets thrown his way, I do don't think it is uh, crazy to say that he'll get maybe two or three more passes thrown his way uh, every game day. So pay attention to Rob Gronkowski, obviously in the roles of blocking. He was already uh, helping out a ton with blocking for this team anyway, so his role in regards to that probably isn't going to change. Another player to look out for in terms of the receiving role that O.J. Howard had on this offense and how that can be replaced is Cam Braid. I talked about Cam Braid a couple of times now leading up to this video, uh, and you know I basically talked about it right after. After the injury had happened, but Cam Brate's a very good receiving tight end. He has phenomenal hands. I've really only seen him drop one pass that hit him square in the hands, um, and overall, Cam Brate is a very, very solid tight end. I think that he is uh, up there in terms of the better half of tight ends in the league. He could be a starting tight end for a lot of teams. I have no doubt about that in my mind. He's been with the team for a while now. I think this is his seventh season, maybe his sixth. So one of you guys can correct me down in the comment section below. But, uh, you know, before the time of Bruce Arians and Tom Brady, I know it feels like a decade ago, but... You know, Cam Brait was making plays with Jameis Winston, Dirk Cutter, and the rest of the offense out there. He was a very productive tight end, he, especially in the red zone. He was catching touchdowns left, right, and center, and I think that that's really where we could see Cam Brait shine, uh, filling in for O.J. Howard in terms of being a receiving tight end 
for this offense. We saw a little bit of it versus the Chargers, actually. He had one catch from Tom Brady, and it resulted in a touchdown. I think that we could start to see Cam Brate fill in more of that role in the future now for the rest of this season, you know, being a red zone target, uh, being just the overall one of the main receiving tight ends that the Buccaneers throw out there. Him and Rob Gronkowski, I think, could be a very dangerous duo at the receiving tight end position. The one thing I have against Cam Brate is that he's not the best run blocker in the world. I don't think he's the worst run blocker in the world, but OJ Howard was a pretty decent run blocker in his own right, and I think it is a pretty decent step down when comparing the run blocking of OJ Howard to the run blocking of Cam Brait. So I think that while Cam Brait can fill in that role as a receiving tight end, uh, the downside to that is that he is not the best blocker, and you may have to look at other options for that as well. But I do expect Cam Braid to get a few more targets thrown his way as well. Now with the absence of OJ Howard, I would not be surprised if Cam Braid probably got, I want to say, four passes thrown his way per game now at least moving forward. So pay attention to Cam Braid, especially in the red zone, because that is where he shines. Another guy who could potentially come back and replace OJ Howard in terms of his blocking ability is going to be Anthony Alclair. Now, Anthony Alclair is currently on the IR. Some of the weird rules that the uh, NFL has with the RIR right now is that you could be on there for three weeks and then return. I think that's how that works right now. So if the Buccaneers are able to bring Anthony Alclair back from the IR, I have no doubts that that would be the guy who would replace the blocking production that OJ Howard was giving this Buccaneers offense. I say that because Bruce Arians himself said this past offseason that Anthony Alclair was one of the better blocking tight ends in the entire NFL and that bringing him back that this past offseason Season was a priority. They resulted in bringing him back and, you know, big, big praise from Bruce Arians to Anthony Alclair in the offseason. To say that he's one of the better blocking tight ends in the entire NFL, that's a lot of praise. So, if he is able to come back from the IR here soon, I imagine in the next week or two, depending on what his injury is, uh, he would definitely be the guy to replace O.J. Howard's blocking ability that he had in his role in the offense. And, you know, really don't discount Anthony Alclair as a receiving tight end either. He can make some catches and do some impressive things when he needs to in terms of being a receiving tight end. I think overall, Anthony now is a pretty underrated, but also pretty balanced tight end who can give you a lot. So in terms of the blocking production, if Anthony now can come back, uh, look for him to fill in that role with Cam Bright probably filling in the receiving role. And then the last guy worth mentioning, just because I want to mention him, Tanner Hudson. We could potentially see him out there as a receiving tight end, uh, maybe rotating in with Cameron Brait, although much like Cameron Brait, he doesn't have a ton of great blocking ability right now either. Um, so overall, his role would be limited, if any. So... Right now, the only three healthy tight ends the Buccaneers have on this roster are Rob Gronkowski, Cam Brate, and Tanner Hudson. Besides Rob Gronkowski, you don't have a ton in terms of blocking ability from Cam Brate or Tanner Hudson. One remedy that you could have for that is by having an extra offensive lineman out there to help block maybe Joe Hegg. I would not be surprised if the Bucs kind of put Joe Hegg out there as an eligible offensive or an, an eligible receiver who ends up blocking. The Steelers do it all the time with Zach Banner. It's actually become kind of a meme in the Steelers fan base community. So, and Zach Banner himself has pretty much acknowledged it as well. So, I could see the Buccaneers doing that as well. Do not be surprised if they use Joe Hegg as an eligible receiver, but then he just ends up run blocking on uh, run plays and stuff like that, which I honestly would not have a ton of problems with. I think that that could work pretty darn well. So overall, guys, in terms of the passing ability that OJ Howard has now left for that to be filled in the offense, look for Cam Brait primarily and look for OJ Howard to get a little bit of work as well. In terms of the run blocking, you know, OJ or Rob Gronkowski was doing that anyway. That's what I meant. Look for Cam Brait and Rob Gronkowski in the receiving ability. Uh, in the blocking ability, look for definitely Rob Gronkowski to continue his role with that. Look for Anthony Alclair if he is able to return from injury, but uh, in the meantime, time before he returns from injury if he can look for maybe Joe Hegg to be an eligible receiver offensive lineman who just run blocks when he needs to that would kind of be the remedy that I think would be happening for this offense to fill both of those roles that OJ Howard has been leaving here in the offense but again you know I wish OJ Howard nothing but a speedy recovery it was unfortunate somebody did make the point out to me though of if there was any position group for the Buccaneers to have a season ending injury like this it would be you know the tight end group which we have the most depth in I've said it before I'll say it again I think the Buccaneers 
arguably have the best tight end room in the entire NFL. I really don't have many doubts about that in my mind. Uh, so there's a lot of guys coming in here now who can fill in the role that OJ Howard has left. Both roles, I guess I should say. And I could even see the Buccaneers get a little bit creative in terms of uh, replacing that blocking ability that OJ Howard is leaving as well. But guys, that's going to be it for this discussion video. Let me know your thoughts about all of the discussions I made down in the comments section below. What do you think about the uh, tight ends that the Buccaneers currently have on this team? And what do you think about what their roles can be moving forward without OJ Howard? Guys, again, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. I will see you in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.